we're going to look at a quick, non-destructive technique for applying an emulated infrared look to our images. As with real infrared photography, this technique tends to work best when you have images with strong areas of foliage in them. First, we'll add an invert adjustment by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Invert. This inverts the color values of our image, giving us a negative appearance. What we can then do is set the Invert Adjustments Blend Mode to Color. This now gives us the basis for the channel swapping that we would typically do with infrared photography. To achieve this, we can add a Channel Mixer Adjustment. We start on the red channel, so for this we want to reduce the red contribution to 0% and increase the blue contribution to 100%. Then we'll switch over to the blue channel and reverse the red and blue contributions here as well. So red goes to 100%, blue goes to 0%. Now we've got quite a strong false color infrared appearance. We could add a small flourish in the form of some diffused light around the highlight details. Affinity Photo has a diffuse glow filter for this effect, and we can add it non-destructively by going to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Blur, Diffuse Glow. Now, Live filters Child Layer into the currently selected layer by default, so we can just expand the Channel Mixer layer and drag the Diffuse Glow layer out to the top of the layer stack. This ensures it will affect all the layers beneath it. On the dialog, we can increase the radius, which controls the spread of the diffusion. Then we will reduce the intensity slightly until the effect looks more subtle. A great way of controlling the infrared colors is to use a selective color adjustment, which we can add by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Selective Color. By default, we're targeting red tones. We can reduce the cyan contribution and increase the yellow contribution to make the red tones more prominent. Now, the adjustment also allows you to target tonal ranges. We'll target blacks here, then reduce the yellow contribution slightly to lend the darker tones a blue tint. Because this layer stack is non-destructive, we have complete freedom to change the parameters of any edits we have made. For example, we could click on the Channel Mixer icon here to reopen the dialog. Then we might switch to green and reduce the green contribution to 0%. Instead, we will turn the green channel information into a 50-50 mix of red and blue. This gives the false color image a completely different feel. Going back to the selective color dialog, we might now switch to yellows to reduce the cyan contribution here and increase the yellow contribution like we did with the reds. Finally, we might want to see what a monochromatic version of this image might look like when converted from the false color infrared tones. Now, rather than use a black and white adjustment, a better way of creating a perceptually correct black and white model is by adding a channel mixer adjustment, then changing the output model to gray. This will perform a weighted intensity calculation from the RGB color data and will give us a nicely balanced black and white rendition of the image without requiring any further manipulation. Once again, because our layer stack is non-destructive, we could go back into the channel mixer dialog where we have performed the channel swap and return the green channel to its normal values to see what our original edit would look like when converted to black and white. And of course, the black and white conversion is just one layer, so we can easily hide it to return to our color image which is very useful for auditioning and comparing different edits and ideas. So that was a video on how to achieve a non-destructive emulated infrared look.
I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.